Hi guys, I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade meatballs. I'm going to insert a picture on how these look. So you're going to need your vegan protein of choice. I'm using some local Wegmans plant-based protein ground. You're going to need breadcrumbs. I'm just using rehydrated panko breadcrumbs. Your seasonings, oregano, parsley, basil, garlic powder, onion powder, and salt. You're going to need some minced garlic, you're going to need some diced peppers, and chopped onions, and this is everything you're going to need, and also some tomato sauce, obviously, depending on what you're using these meatballs for. So let's get into, so into the bowl. We're going to add in our breadcrumb. We're going to add in our peppers. And we're going to mix this until it's well combined. Oh, and I forgot to add in the intro that you actually need a vegan egg substitute. Um, or you can use flax egg as a binder. You honestly probably don't need it, but I usually use it in my meatballs. And I'm also cooking a little bit of the onions to get them nice and soft so they're not big chunks inside the meatballs. So yeah, and then we're going to season this all up. So now we're going to add in some garlic. Honestly, I eyeball a lot of my ingredients, but I will list the full recipe down below. We're going to add in our egg substitute. Again, you really don't need this unless you want it. I'm just adding it in. We're going to add in our seasonings. And we're going to add in our slightly cooked mushrooms. I cooked these on the stove top. And then we're just going to mix this until well combined. And if you do have a cookie scooper, get it out. I'm going to be using my cookie scooper to kind of measure out how much of everything I need. And we're just going to mix this until well combined. Like well combined. And I'll be right back and we're going to portion everything out. So we're ready. I'm going to show you two ways to make these. So you can use a smaller cookie scooper or a big one or you can actually just use a spoon. Use whatever you got. And I'm actually going to put some water in one of the little containers because you want to make sure your hands are wet so the protein doesn't stick to your fingers. And all we're going to do is go in and scoop out the amount you want and make it into a ball. And that's literally it. So this is with the smaller scooper. You're going to take it. Take a little bit of water in your hand, make sure it's moisturized, and you're going to make a ball. So that's a smaller meatball, and do the same thing with the big one. That's a big old meatball. Make sure your hand's still a little bit moisturized, because you don't want it to stick. Roll, and that's the big meatball. And obviously, look at the difference. You can literally see the difference. And I'm just going to make a bunch of those, and I'll be back to show you guys how to pan fry them. This is super easy, but I'll show you. I'll be right so This is the amount I got out of the vegan protein I used. I got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 meatballs. Big size meatballs. They're a nice size. I guess that's the best comparison. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your oil of choice. I'm using avocado oil, but choose what you got. I'm always an advocate for that. And then you're going to take your frying pan. I use this to actually make the, to cook the onions off a little bit. So I'm going to bring you guys out a little bit. And you're literally just going to drop a little bit of oil in here. And at this point you can add in your onions, which is what I'm going to do. And you can add in all of your meatballs. Now what you want to do is you want to cook these until they're brown on both sides. Give them some room. And I'm just going to do the perimeter or the border of my pan. And the good thing about these is if you don't use them now, you can actually freeze them and defrost them. So there's another option if you're not looking to make them right away. So yeah, we're just going to line the perimeter. You want to make sure there's like a finger space between them. I don't think all of them are going to fit. So that should be enough 
So this is my meatballs. I'm going to cook them on the stove for a few minutes and I'll be back to show you what they look like once they're nice and golden -y brown. So these are the final results of my beautiful, yummy, yummy, yummy <laughs> meatballs. So at this point in your process, you can add whatever you want to your meatballs because these are going to be going on subs and they're Italian style. I added in tomatoes and some more onions because I'm actually going to be adding in some tomato sauce. But you can do whatever you want. So at this point, you can make a glaze. You can make an Asian sauce and make an Asian style meatball. You can add in what we used to do, a demi glaze over these. There is so many Swedish meatballs you can do. The possibilities are endless. But for me, I'm just going to go classic and add over some tomato sauce and you know make it taste good I'm gonna add in some more garlic and let this simmer on the stove for a couple minutes and we're gonna have some meatballs to put on our subs and that's honestly all she wrote and I'll show you guys what they look like when they're all done. And again, on the stove, you just want to simmer these until they're nice and golden. This one isn't touched yet. So I'm going to show you what they're supposed to look like once they're done. So you can kind of see what this looks like. You got that goldeny hue on the end. That's what you want. And you can also use a thermometer and the inside should be 165 degrees or Fahrenheit well degrees <laughs> and that's when you know it's cooked on the inside that's for most proteins so I'm just gonna simmer this on the stove and I'll be back to show you guys what they look like 